Hello everyone, Firex here with another tutorial. This time we will start making scripts. And because that's a big part of mission editing, I will dedicate this video to only the very basics. In some of my videos I use one or more scripts and for those who have never made one, it might be a bit difficult to understand at first, so I will explain how scripts are made, what they are used for and we will also make very well known Hello World script at the end. Ok, let's begin. So as you most probably know, missions are made by placing objects on a map in the mission editor and using commands to manipulate with these objects. We can make a soldier and then use a command to tell him to lay down, move a bit, use his weapon or a wave at his friends. These commands need to be executed at a certain time under certain conditions which allows us to further develop the mission and make sure that everyone is doing what they are supposed to throughout the mission. The most simple and basic method to use commands is via triggers. These are placed on the mission map, mark a certain territory and they can be activated once a unit of a certain site or faction enters that area. Triggers can also be delayed using the countdown and timeout boxes allowing us to control the mission by checking both the positions of objects and the time of the mission. This allows us to make position based, progress based and time based actions in the mission which is practically all we need. Triggers however can't do all the work that is needed. Sometimes we need a more advanced process in our mission with many commands and structures and in that situations triggers are either inconvenient or straight up impossible to use. In these moments a mission maker needs to use a script, an external file in the mission that contains all commands that are needed. Once the game receives the command to open a script, it looks into the mission folder, finds a file with the given name and opens it. Then it starts to read the commands written inside, one by one and executes them right away. The scripts have relatively strict rules that you need to know and keep in mind at all times. If the game encounters an error inside a script, it stops executing the commands, returns an error message and the mission may not continue correctly so it's best to make sure that you have no errors at all or at least that the script does what it's supposed to. Inside a script we have many options and possibilities. We can loop the commands and repeat them as many times as we want. We can stop executing the scripts for a defined or random period of time. We can wait until other actions are completed. We can assign variables inside the script, send some values to other scripts wait for different values and continue working with them and much more. Scripts can be called from triggers, other scripts or mod configs in case of an add-on. The game itself uses a sheer amount of scripts, among other things of course, to run properly and to allow us to enjoy all that it offers. Alright, so now that we know what scripts do, we can move forward. At this point in time, you should already know at least some commands in the game and you should understand how they work so you might be already familiar with the basic rules of SQF scripts. If not, listen carefully. Every command or a group of commands, or as the official wiki names it, statement, needs to be terminated with a semicolon. Statement is practically any part of a script. If you need to connect several commands together, you can always use brackets. The type of the brackets differs, so pay attention, I always make sure to display the commands on screen when talking about them in tutorials, so that there is no confusion with the brackets type. A quick example, let's say we want to check for some condition, let's say once the player is dead, we want 6 commands to happen. That requires us to use brackets. SQF is not line based, you can divide several commands into multiple lines and that won't matter to the game. This might not seem important at first, but it's very useful thing to keep the script structured so that you understand what's going on. For example, the SQS used in Arma Cold War Assault was line based and all commands related to a condition had to be placed on one line and that sometimes makes it more difficult for you to understand what is going on there. You can also use comments next to the commands so that you can keep your future self informed about what happens in the script or what needs to be done or rewritten. 
One method is to write the word command, quotes, and write any command you would like. The game ignores the command altogether, so no need to worry about it. You can also use double slash to mark a command on one line, or use a slash and a star sign to mark a multiple line based command. If you follow this channel and you have seen some of my basement pages where I leave all the commands for a tutorial, you can see that I often use these commands to remind you of what the commands do. Ok, that's basically all you need to know about scripts for now. I often use scripts in other tutorials, I also tend to use scripts in Let's Make series, so you can definitely encounter them here. I recommend you to try to make some scripts yourself later as well. And let's go and make a script already. Open your mission folder first. The default path is documents, arma 3, missions, or if you are using a custom profile in the game, is documents, arma 3, other profiles, your profile name, missions. I think I don't need to remind you that you actually need to make a mission, save it, and then you can find it here. Once inside, you can see a mission.sqm file, and that file contains all the stuff you have made in the editor. This folder is the place where you can make your scripts, so let's make one. You can download some advanced text editors, WordPad, Notepad++, there is also a text editor for Arma games called Poseidon, but I don't want you to download some complicated editors, there is no need for that right now, you can do that anytime later. I always make scripts using the simple Notepad. So I'll make a new file, text file, and then immediately rename it, including the extension, script.sqf. If your computer doesn't allow you to change extensions, go into your folder settings and untick the option to hide the common file extensions. There are tutorials all around the internet on this, you need to make sure to make an sqf file, otherwise it won't work. When you make your first script, Windows should ask you what to use to open it. The icon also changes, so make sure to have the correct extension and not the txt file which will not work in the game. And once you are done with that, open the script in the notepad or almost any other simple text editor and there is where the script will be. So we will make a very simple hello world text on the screen, so let's write on the first line slash slash, this is my first script, hello world. Enter, next line, hint, quotes, hello world, quotes, semicolon. Do not forget the semicolon at all times. Save the file and we can go back to the mission editor, so load your mission and make a trigger around the player, activation anyone so that it activates right after the mission starts and type into the on activation window, script launch equals to empty brackets, exits vm, quotes, script.sqf quotes. This is the standard way to launch scripts, first you assign a variable to the script that is launched, then you pass any parameters, in this case we don't need any, the command exits vm itself, and the name of the script. The variable can be practically anything, as long as it's one word, it shouldn't start with numbers, you should only use letters, and you should avoid predefined words like player, title text, damage and so on, so that the game knows you are talking about variable and not a command, object or something else. The parameters can be used in scripts that do the same thing for many different objects. We don't need that right now, but once you encounter parameters, just remember what they do. And that's it, when you launch the mission, a text hello world is displayed on the screen, which is exactly what we wanted. Now it's up to you. Add more commands under the hint one, remember always divide commands with semicolons, you can also go and watch some other tutorials and study the scripts there, or find something else to do. I think there isn't much more to say for now, I might make a video or write an article about some characteristic structures used in scripts in the future, maybe maybe we'll see. I also recommend you to add a parameter when launching Arma, it's called show script errors, and it's very useful when you are editing, because the game will always tell you where your mistake is and how you can fix it. So that's it for this video, I hope to see you all in the next one, comment, like and share and have a great day.